Hello to the GCN community. My name is Mitch Gardner and in today's quick tips I'm going to be going through two of the most common types of reverbs, convolution and algorithmic. So what is a reverb? It is basically a reflective echo of the sound. Um, to, to cause reverb it's, it's bouncing back from the walls um, straight back to your ears which is what makes the room reverberate. Um, in a mix it generally fills in the empty spaces so if you've got dry sounding uh, recording uh, dry sounding samples then reverb can really fill in the gap and that's what I'm going to go through today um, every room's reverb is different so if you went to the Royal Albert Hall um, the reverb will sound different to your bedroom just for the fact that the hall is a lot bigger versus the small size of a bedroom for example so um, they've, the, re the reverb's got further to travel um, so it's going to sound bigger and is therefore going to be longer. Um, to make it longer is what they call a decay. So a decay is caused by the absorption from the walls. This can all depend on what is um, what your walls are made of for a start. Um, if you had foam walls, um, then it would die down quicker and would have less of a reverb um, because then the foam is going to absorb more of the sound. Try not to get it confused with delay. So are they related? In fact, they are. So a echo is just the reflection from one particular sound. So if you were shouted echo in a woods, then you'd hear it reflect back off the first trees, for example. Whereas a reverb in a room, for example, is a lot more complicated um, with a lot more reverbs going on over reflective walls. Um, there would be a delay to an extent, but it's rarely perceptible. So. So if we first look at the convolution reverb, um, it uses something called impulse responses. So um, what is an impulse response? It's capturing sounds from different rooms. So this can be from a bedroom to a concert hall to a scoring stage. Um, abbreviated normally to IR. So if someone asks about the IR of a reverb, then that's what they're going to be talking about. Um, this is the most natural sounding as well because it's being captured as from a, a real room generally this is the one that sounds more likely to be an actual room um, but the downside is it can use up quite a lot of RAM on your computer if used quite a lot. How is one made? There are two or different ways. The first one will be the sign sweep which is the most common way. Um, so firstly it's played on a speaker um, but it provides the best signal to noise ratio and it goes up and down uh, from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, um, so which is the um, range of the human hearing. The second way is the transient method. So this is a different one. So if you get a loud burst of noise, so for example, a gunshot, a balloon popping or anything like that, this is what you'd use. But obviously the downside of this is can cause hearing damage. So just as a disclaimer, if you were to use this or to make one of your own, be careful. Um, the quality will depend on the location, noise level and equipment, obviously. Um, but this is also going to be the same with the sign suite method as well. Um, if we look at now the algorithmic reverb, a lot more complicated in its um, in its theory, but it's still the same thing as a convolution in a way, which I'll go through. Uh, so a simulation on mathematical calculations, so it's a lot more in-depth from that, that perspective. Um, the parameters that you put in your DAW, that's what it would generate. Um, it tries to be like a convolution because obviously it's trying to make a room sound but obviously it struggles, so it can sound very digital if you don't use it in the right way. Um, a pro of this though is it uses less power than a convolution because it doesn't have any IRs to put into the DAW. If we go over to Logic here, um, we've got two reverbs loaded up, one algorithmic and one convolution. Um, the convolution we're going to look at is the built-in space designer from Logic, and then the algorithmic is the um, H reverb from Waves. Um, for the library we're going to look at, it's just the VSL section and the string ensemble in the contact factory library, because this is a dry one. Um, we're going to be looking at the library with these two reverbs today. So let's hear it without any reverb for the second. very full, very rich still. So let's just see what that sounds like with a convolution on it for a start. Just gives it that little bit of life that makes it sound a bit more realistic. I'm just gonna change the output on here to make it, make the reverb sound a little quieter, make it more subtle.
there we go sounding great so that's with a convolution reverb now let's try it with a algorithmic reverb so I loaded up one called the arena um, which is one of the presets with the H reverb but I've since modified it just to try and get as close as a sound as I can to what I like As you can hear, a little bit brighter than the convolution, but with the algorithmic, as you can imagine, you do have the option to equalize and everything like that. So um, I've not done anything like that with this one, but you can hear, you can get an impression of what an algorithmic can do versus a convolution here anyway. So that's with the legato patch. Now let's just do a staccato patch now. Let's do it dry without any reverb. Okay, so as you, can, you can hear the bass is um, a little resonant in the recording there, so you can hear them tailing off a little later than the high-end strings, um, which is a good little addition for realism as well. Um, so let's try that with uh, spaces on the first, so be, care, be aware of the output. Not too bad, makes it sound like a normal scoring stage to me. Okay, so let's try the H reverb now with the uh, preset I had. So you can hear that one tailing a little longer than the convolution. We've got 3.6 here versus the 1.9 seconds of the scoring stage here. So let's let's go ahead and just move that back a bit. Let's see if we can just get it at 1.91. See what this would sound like now. See that's not having as much of an effect as all as all this 1.9 second wood on the convolution. I mean we can alter it a little bit so we can add a bit more wetness to it to make it more prominent. Just exaggerating the fact there of what that what that function does um, with the wet section there at the end um, but you can hear that it just doesn't quite have that same effect so there's just an example for you with a bit longer of a decay so you just get an idea of what the algorithmic can do um, personally I use a convolution I just find it has a bit more of that natural um, resonance over the uh, algorithmic reverb but in the same way I've used convolution for longer than I have algorithmic so I'm still playing with algorithmic to see what I can what I can do with it um, so let me know in the comments um, what you use and why um, be good to hear the different comparisons of, of people's personal preferences there um, this has been a GCN quick tips with me Mitch Gardner I hope you found it helpful and see you in the next one